In a world where being sung of by bards is the mark of a true hero, you begin with a single tile, a destination, and the desire to become songworthy. What unfolds is a labyrinthine dungeon of your creation, filled with dangerous enemies, wandering monsters, challenging combat, puzzles, and valuable treasure. Inspired by dungeon crawlers, role-playing games, and choose-your-own-adventure classics, Bardsung is a cooperative dungeon explorer that combines the best of all three to create a powerful new experience. That's right, today we're going to be talking about Bardsung, an epic dungeon delving game from Steam. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Oh, excuse me. Oh, anyways. Yes, as I was saying, Steamforge Games released Bardsung uh, just recently into the retail channel. They kickstarted it back in November of 2020, which just seems like yesterday. Oh, it sure does feel like 2020 out here. I'd say it's gotta be between the 10th and the 27th of November. And I hope I'm not missing any really interesting dungeon delving board game Kickstarters. I'm sure I'm not. I did not jump on the Kickstarter. Uh, I got my copy through the retail channels, and that is what this video is going to be about, is the retail version of Bardsum. Uh, there's lots of stretch goals and cool unlocked little doobly-doos that came in the Kickstarter version, and there's some other videos out there on YouTube that show all those little goodies. But today we're gonna be looking exclusively at the version you can get when you walk into your friendly local game store and pick one up. So we're gonna take a look at this, but before we do, if this is stuff that you're interested in, then go ahead and click that subscribe button, yo, and get up on my channel and hit that thumbs up. It, uh, oh, it does that. I don't know, but anyways, let's take a look at the box. Oh boy. Okay, so we bust the lid off this beast, which is a epically huge game, I have to say. This might be one of the biggest endeavors Steamforge has ever done. I can't say as I have a comprehensive knowledge of their entire game catalog, but Bard Song has got to be right up there as one of the biggest games they've ever produced. And as soon as you get inside, of course, you get a little Bard Song insert, which has some cool stuff on the other side. And we will get back to that. We're going to see, of course, you get all your little tiles and punch them out tokens. And there are piles of these things. There's 20 double sided tiles plus doors and dead ends. There's 26 terrainy type tokens, 90 characteristic modifiers, plus 129 more tokens that I counted, including condition markers, gold, experience points, and more. 247 tokens in all, which is kind of insane in a good way the bulk of these tokens are of course as i mentioned characteristic modifiers they're the same as D, &D. bardsung uses strength dexterity wisdom intelligence constitution and charisma and you have a baseline stat that you start with which is just a straight die roll of a d20 uh, but some of your characters or heroes will say on the back of their card whether or not you get a bonus to that roll at which point you would find the appropriate modifier and put it in your little dashboard which we'll see later Included in the contents of the box are all these gamer trays. Some of them are empty, so you can take the 16,000 little punch em out tokens and sort them out and store them in these cool little trays. Then, as I mentioned earlier, you get these hero dashboards, which lets you insert your little hero card, ability, equipment cards, as well as your stat modifiers, with those 90 tokens that you got. And then you have them in quick, easy reference, and then when you're ready to put the game away temporarily, of course it's temporarily, because the campaign must continue. Then you snap the little lid on and all your cards and tokens and all that jazz are safe and you can put it in the box and you're good to go so you can just break it out next time and pick up right where you left off. You get two bow tie shaped trays full of monsters and heroes. Bardsung in total has five heroes and 63 monster figures and most of them have their own little slot in these trays with a handful of the bigger monsters being in the bottom of the box. You get one tray that has your greater demon wings and some assorted cards and whatnot. And under those wings is the 10 die set that you get for Bardsung, which includes two D20s, a D12, a 10s D10, D8, three D6s, and two D4s. To go along with the card theme, you get more cards and more cards and some more cards and then a handful more cards and then probably a couple more cards just in case. The Bardsung website in the back of the box, I think, just every piece of advertisement I found said that there are more than 900 cards. But by my count, using the rule book, as it lists all the cards you're supposed to be getting, I only come up with 735. There's supposed to be 65 enemy profile cards, 4 mini boss initiative cards, 12 boss profile cards, 37 boss initiative cards, 18 miscellaneous boss cards, 5 wandering monster deck event cards, 138 aspect battle cards, 214 aspect challenge cards, 17 dungeon corridor cards, 39 dungeon room cards, 
11 behavior cards, 78 narrative cards, 60 treasure cards, 8 squire cards, 28 wound cards, and 1 second win card, which comes up to a total of 735 cards. Now counting all of the hero cards, and there's 19 cards per hero for a total of 95 cards, it bumps it up to 830, which is still well shy of the 900 they proclaim, but it's a buttload of cards, absolutely. I'm just not sure where the rest of the cards are or if I'm missing something. I went through the entire rule book and I cannot find where these cards are referenced. So if you know where the remaining 70 plus cards have gone, I would love to know. Please post it down in the comments. I don't think it's going to affect anything because all the cards are accounted for, at least in the game I got. And I don't think you will notice a difference between a stack of 830 cards and a stack of 900 cards, but I'm just wondering where the number came from, for my own morbid curiosity. Down in the bottom of the box, we have the rest of the demon. It's a greater demon. It sits on a 120 millimeter base. And then you have several assorted monsters and so forth gathering around them. An epically huge board that measures a staggering 33 inches square, which is nearly 1100 square inches of gaming space, which is massive. A rule book as expected, and an adventure book that comes in at a whopping 179 pages. And finally, one last gamer's tray cubby filled with monsters, fiends, and other unsavory characters, along with little vaults to store your cards and whatnot in. Now, there's no question that one would be impressed by the miniatures. Steamforge Games puts out a lot of really great looking models, beautifully sculpted, highly detailed. But the thing that blew me away more than anything else was this adventure book. Not this, this is a rule book. Don't, no, that, don't look at that. Look at this. This thing is massive. It's just huge it's dang near 180 pages now to put that in context a DD adventure like curse of strahd or wild beyond the witch light or even journeys to the radiant citadel come in at about 250 pages with journeys being closer to 220 in that range and those books are all 50 bucks a piece so at that rate this is almost a third of the price of the entire game it's just this book and this has all kinds of great stuff in it. It's got narratives in it that you can read as you get to certain points in the game. Um, let's see, this is chapter 25, and I just randomly opened at a spot, chapter 27. And there's boss encounters in here, because of course the other side of the board, as you'll see here, uh, has an arena side. There's an exploration side here, and an arena side. Back to the other picture, and there you go. I was just blown away by this adventure book. It's, it's just, you know, I got nothing. It's just that, it's, you know. But if we can stop fawning over the adventure book for a moment, which has left me completely speechless, oh, I'm getting overclipped. Anywho, let's take a look at the miniatures a little more closely while I prattle on about some other stuff in this game that I thought was really cool. The miniatures in this set are awesome. They are highly detailed and will take paint very nicely. And that 150 hours of playability is just what Steamforge says it will take to play through the campaign. That's not counting the time to paint all these awesome miniatures, if you choose to go that route. If you figure, on average, just under an hour per model, busting out the low-level mobs with a quick base coat wash and dry brushing, maybe a couple little details here and there, but not too much time spent on them, and then putting your effort into your bosses and your heroes, you could easily add another 50 hours of enjoyment, likely more, onto that 150 hours of playtime. In a good way. I mean that in a good way, because this, that's the point of the hobby, is to be able to enjoy painting and assembling miniatures. All Steamforge games miniatures come pre-assembled, but you can still get to paint them. You can still get to paint them. You can still get to paint them, and that's great. Tony the Tiger. So if you take that 150 hours of playability and then tack on 50 or so hours of hobby enjoyment, that's on the conservative side, for a $200 board game, that's, that's awesome. That works out to a dollar an hour of entertainment. And I think that's pretty darn cool. And that's just going through the adventure book once. There are choices and options and you can swap out heroes. So there's tons of replayability and there's real replayability, not generic replayability where a game might say, oh, you replayability, new game every time because you change out a character, or you change out a scenario or, or a terrain feature or something. I'm talking about real replayability because there's choose your own adventure options in here where you actually can decide what route to take and that will affect the outcome. There's reputation that can affect your outcome. There's event cards that come into play that affect the outcome. 
you could legitimately have multiple unique experiences with Bardsung due to the different heroes you can swap out, the different choices you can make, the way reputation will affect certain encounters, and the way the dungeon cards play out as you draw dungeon cards. So even if you played exactly the same scenario with exactly the same heroes, the dungeon and corridor decks will add a certain amount of uniqueness to that encounter. Now, of course, with a game this big, there's bound to be some little flubs in the rules here and there. So it is worth noting that if you go to the resources page on Steamforge's website, you can find a Rata that when I looked had just been updated February of this year. But they also have a new player's guide, which is just a three page PDF. You can print it out or keep it on your tablet or your computer or whatever you need. And it lists all the iconography in the game. And there are a lot of icons in Steamforge. So it gives you a list of all the iconography, basic turn structure and all that stuff, what the terrain features do. It's just a really handy document to have. I recommend printing that out. And I'll put the link to both of those things, the errata and the resource page and the new player guide down in the description so you can check that out. Now, one last thing to show you. I don't know what this is doing. All right. This thing. This is the topper that comes in the game. And at first, I just took it out Bloop. And I was like, okay, cool. They put a little topper on there to protect the components from getting scratched. Not a big deal. But it is a big deal, and you should definitely save this because all the tiles in Bard Sung. <laughs> oh no, why do you do this to me when I'm on camera? It's a tile reference sheet. You know, if you're familiar with Descent or a lot of these games, dungeon crawling games, they use as a hex or a grid or something so you can move your little guys around. And Bardsung doesn't do that, it uses zones. So a larger tile might have five, six, or seven zones. I think the zones add a nice realism to the game. Not that there's anything wrong with grids and hexes. Descent has grids and I really like that. You just move up, like I have six moves, whatever, then you move up six squares. This is zones, you still have a movement rating, but of course it's usually lower because you're gonna move two zones, which could be you know half of a tile in some instances. But the zones are not drawn out. They are they're sort of using artistic license, if you wanna call it that. So you can usually tell where the zone is, like where the break in the zone is, because they'll have like a pillar that's crashed or a big crack through the floor. But if you're ever in question, this topper here will give you a quick reference as to where the zones are on the tiles. I do plan on painting up quite a few of these models in future videos, so if you want to catch those episodes, then please hit the subscribe button down below, ring the bell for notification. I'm pointing, but I don't know where any of that stuff is, so so if it's not here, look a little left or to the right. You know, it's down below. You'll figure it out. I have faith in you. You're a bright, intelligent, wonderful person. Thanks for watching me talk about things on the internet. Goodbye. Did they subscribe? I don't know yet.